I mean, you obviously, Paul, also believe that there's some kind of physical principle. You say it might require finding a new physics, but there's a principle at work in the universe that seems to drive things in the direction of life. Things won't just remain inanimate matter if there are if it's possible, if you like, for the circumstances to to allow them to to go towards life. Now, now, what what is that for you? What what is it that's that's doing that? What's at work in that case? I should say right at the outset that we know of no such principle of uh, directionality in the universe. So, uh, these days, there is a, a assumption that many scientists make that life is somehow written into the laws of the universe that the, the universe is rigged in favor of life uh, and so uh, given enough planets and enough time and so on life will out you know, the, 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 uh, the universe will be teeming with it that wasn't the case when i was a student incidentally uh, then uh, that the assumption was that life was a stupendously improbable accident it would have happened only once in the universe uh, and we are it uh, now uh, from my point of view, uh, I would like to believe that we live in a universe uh, which has, which is rigged in favour of life, where there is a life principle, where there is something that coaxes matter to life against the raw odds that you will get just from shuffling molecules. But we haven't found it yet. And that's why I put such importance with things like this interface of the hardware and the software, because if there is a a principle like that, that's where we're going to find a new physics. That's where we will find the life principle. Now, that's one way of finding it. The other way is to discover a second sample of life. Um, so long as we've only got one sample of life, it's possible to argue, well, it was just an incredibly unlikely accident. But of course, we're witness to it because we're the product of it. But you can't conclude uh, from the existence of, of life on Earth that there's going to be life throughout the universe. So it just might be an accident. Um, but if we discover just one other sample of life, just a single microbe of life, but not as we know it, uh, that would establish that there is um, a high probability of non-life turning into life. And we don't even have to go beyond Earth. I mean, obviously, if we find ET, or if we even find um, uh, a living cell on Mars, which didn't get there from Earth, uh, then the, the case would be made. But we could find life on Earth uh, which is uh, so fundamentally different from life as we know it, that we would attribute a separate origin. So if the transition from non-life to life uh, is indeed something that occurs with high probability, we would expect it to have occurred many times over right here on our home planet. And how do we know it didn't? Has anybody actually looked? And it turns out that almost nobody has bothered to look uh, for, uh, I'm talking microbial life only, for um, microbes which are, not based on the, the usual sort of D, DNA, RNA, uh, protein, at least uh, not on the alphabet, not on the um, uh, genetic code uh, that known life uses. And that would establish the point. We'd, we'd have two forms of life on Earth. We'd say, right, uh, there must be some sort of life principle. Um, so this is why I attach such enormous importance to discovering uh, either a second form of life on Earth or life beyond Earth, uh, which has arisen uh, from scratch, independently of life on Earth, because then it establishes the existence of a principle that is not there in physics. There is nothing in physics, there is nothing in chemistry uh, that says uh, that matter has to organise in the direction of goal-oriented behaviour, which is what um, living systems display. <laughs>